Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this little uh, four-wheel drive car by Crazon. Uh, the neat thing about this car is, as you can see, mounted on top here, is an FPV camera. And it's a Wi-Fi FPV camera, so we'll have to see how that does. But a you know, pretty neat looking little car, uh, rather inexpensive. And we'll have to see how this FPV camera does. It's the first time I've had an FPV camera on a car, and this is Wi-Fi, so I don't know exactly you know, how that's gonna do. There's gonna be some latency or lag. I don't think it's going to do well going behind buildings or around a house because the Wi-Fi FPV signal most likely will get blocked. Now, as you can see, it is four-wheel drive, but there's no differential. So it's just straight shaft, or you call it, you know, and it front moves the back back moves the front so I do like the look of it the little plastic body on it and it's got metal dog bone so that's good um, let's take a look at it comes with a uh, five cell uh, rechargeable battery it's either a nickel cadmium or a nickel metal hydrate I don't know which one it is it doesn't say 700 milliamp hour six volt that actually gives it you know some kick it actually is a little bit quicker than I thought it's by no it's by no means fast but it's not as slow as I thought it would be and that's probably due to this six cell uh, battery now the charger that it uses is what a lot of these are using now and that is this little let me get the cables on down here this little red uh it lights up red as well usb charger this little funky connector uh, as with the other ones the light does not go out all the way it just dims they tell you three hours charge time for this which sounds about right um, i just let it go all night you're safe to do that just unplug it when the battery gets a little bit warm not hot obviously it'll just get a little warm and you know that's charged up the light will also get much dimmer but i've never had these lights actually go all the way out now you've got a uh, a USB, a micro USB cable. They give you that because the uh, camera, I'll get my stuff tangled here, the camera has a micro USB port for charging it. So that's pretty cool. It has a built in, probably a lithium ion, they don't tell you, a battery in it. And you get a little blue light that comes on when it's powered up, which is not going to be able to be seen here in the daytime. And then it's got all the way to the, to the, to the side. It, it turns these lights on. Let me see if I turn this around in the garage where it's darker. You should be able to see that now, guys. And uh, that is a pretty cool. That's going to be for nighttime driving. Um, I'm not going to try that out today. I'm just going to drive it here in the daytime. I would, I would worry that it could cause a lot of glare. I don't know how well that'll work. Um, but that's at least an option you got there for night driving, which I think is pretty neat to at least have the option to try that out. So. Uh, you can, as you can see here, you have a swivel so you can adjust the camera if you want it to face off a different direction for some reason, like drive down the road and shoot over towards your house. Uh, it'll go all the way around. So I'm going to mount it straight forward here today like this and uh, we'll drive it around like that. So pretty pretty neat how that, how that works. Now it comes with some adhesive uh, strips here that are cut out the same as the base so you can i had to attach it it's just adhesive and attach it to the body so that's how i've done it um, so if it gets knocked off and you need to replace it you got one or if you want to for some reason move it to a different spot though i don't know where else it would sit maybe it might sit back here but uh you know that's where you're most likely to put it up on top like that so it's nice that they included some extra adhesive strips and the controller let's take a look at that the controller here, well, I'm having a mess with wires. <laughs> I'm usually doing this at a table, but I didn't really feel it necessarily needed that with these cars. There's not that much to cover. It's a pistol grip controller. It's just um, non-proportional steering. It's just bam, bam, you know, right, left. But the throttle is proportional, so that makes it much easier to drive, even with the non-proportional steering. You just have an on and off switch here. The only real gripe I have with this car is you got an FPV uh, phone clip here they put onto the controller. So obviously you're gonna snap that on, what you think, to be able to put your phone on it to uh, use the app, which I'll show you in just a moment. Unfortunately, at least on mine, this does not, that's the wrong way, this does not, make sure I hold it up high enough, go on. It's, uh, it just, it, it sits there, but it just pops off. It's square, this is round, I don't know. They should, they obviously were not thinking this out or they changed controllers without realizing that the, the fake antenna up here is not right, uh, the right shape. So I cannot put my phone on here, but I'm going to bind it up with the app and I'll just have it sitting next to me on this trash can while I drive it around. Um, 
just makes it record a video but you know if you want to drive by FEV you're gonna need to figure out a way of maybe putting a screw through this something to help attach it maybe some really strong glue might work you know it's got to be able to hold the weight of a phone so that's what I worry about um, but yeah, I mean, this is more important than, you know, on some of these drones, I don't even fly FPV, but in a car, you might actually but we want to look the entire time, especially if it works behind objects. You're going to need to see where you're going, but you can definitely rig something up. It's just going to take a little bit of uh, ingenuity, and you can also, like I said, just set it next to something um, or sit in a chair, something where you got a place to put your phone or tablet where you can see where you are going. Now, the app that you use for this is called the Crazon app. And uh, let me grab my phone. I don't think any of this is going to be visible, but uh, the app is the Crazon app here. And you just press play, and when it binds up, then you get an option to do your photo and video. There's not much, obviously, to a car uh, for something like this. So, I got some friends messaging me there. And um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and use this app and uh, I'll bind it up here. I've already tested it out, it works fine. Now the camera is only listed on TomTop's website as a 0.3 megapixel camera on this. So I expect it to probably be 480p on the uh, recorded video, though it does look full screen on the app where it's being stretched out most likely. We'll have to see how good the video is. I don't think, if it is 0.3 megapixel, I don't believe 720p is not even possible on 0.3 megapixel. All right guys, so that covers everything on this car. I'll be right back, I gotta put the battery in it. We'll go ahead and take it out for a test for drive and include some footage. Okay guys, so I have the Crazon car. I don't remember the model number of this. I'll include it in the description. Um, bound up and it's all powered up here. It's you know, bound with the controller and the app. One thing I didn't mention was you don't have any kind of steering trim on the controller seat. It's one of these ones with the dial. A pretty standard on these lower end, you know, cheaper cars. And of course you do have an on and off switch on the bottom. So you just have to, you know, if it gets, we'll probably have to do a little, you know, if it's very bad, we'll have to do some uh, uh, steering trim though. If it's just a little bit, you usually could just adjust and, and deal with it. So. Um, we'll go ahead now. We'll take it out. Like I said, it's all bound up. So let's go ahead and take it out for a test drive. Now, I didn't get a drive time on this, you know, but it, it, it advertised it at 15 minutes. I expect that is probably going to be pretty accurate. Um, you just don't know on these, especially with it having a proportional throttle. You know, it depends on how you drive it. If you drive it in the slowest rate, you know, it's going to drive a lot longer than if you drive it at full speed. So, and how much start and stopping that you do. So let's go ahead and. We'll go ahead and put it down here on the on the driveway, and here I've got it bound up. We can hopefully you guys can see the trees across the road. Like I said, I can't put it on here. If you skipped ahead from the uh, overview, uh, the clip does not hold on to the controller. There's like some design change or something. So I'm going to stand here by my car and look at it, and I'm going to go ahead now and start recording video. And it lit up green, so I should be recording the video here. And now it popped up and we're recording. So let's go ahead and take the Crazon car out. Okay, let's just go ahead and we'll take out the Crazon car. One thing I've noticed there, you may see it in the FPV feed, this camera has a tendency to, uh, to get knocked out of its, uh, you know, it, it swivels so easily on, you know, on the body. That it, you know, if I drove it in the grass while I go, it, it was all knocked out of whack. So let's see how that works. I'm wondering though if I'm getting some control lag or issues between the Wi Fi FPV and the controller. It seems like it was a little slow there to react to the steering commands. Let's see how the FPV footage looks here on, the, on my phone. I have to glance down. I'm trying to figure out how bad is the lag. Doesn't seem to be too bad. Now we're not very far away. I expect it to get worse with range. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's a little slow. Now obviously some of that's because we've got um, non-proportional steering. Now I see the camera has fallen off to the side a little bit. So I don't like that, that it's, it's getting knocked out of whack. I like that you can pivot it, but the way it's, it's getting knocked out of spot and you're getting into a, into a crooked FPV video there. Let's see if I can level that out somewhat. It looks like it's still... I was afraid that might happen and I almost mentioned it earlier, but I wanted to make sure. Um, 
that was the case. See, I let off the throttle there and it, did, and it kept going for about a quarter of a second. I think there's definitely some Wi-Fi FPV lag, I'm sorry, Wi-Fi FPV interference. Which that happens with some of this stuff. You see it in the drones too. I've had drones fly away because of interference from Wi-Fi FPV. Or even just wi uh, uh, Wi-Fi routers and stuff will interfere with them. But overall, I mean, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, the speed's not too bad. The steering doesn't seem to be a huge issue for me. You know, obviously I prefer it to be a proportional steering. Let's see how the camera, did the camera get knocked out? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so I would, I would recommend on this car to probably glue that camera swivel into place or try some means of locking it because um, it's kind of nice. I don't think people are going to be adjusting the camera off to some crazy angle very much anyway. But it's getting knocked out of, of spot too easily and you're going to end up with a bunch of crooked FPV footage. Especially, see I think it's aiming down a little bit now. Especially if you um, are going to try to drive this by FPV out of sight, which I don't know if that's possible. Without having to, with it not being able to mount to the clip, it's making it hard for me to do it right now in my review. If I were not focused on this review and I was just sitting in a chair with it, um, I could find an easier spot to put my uh, my phone and be able to cue uh, FPV drive it a little bit better. As you can see, the camera is all out of whack again. So this is definitely uh, quite a big issue in my opinion. Um, I don't know if it'll look so bad on the recorded footage, but the camera's constantly getting knocked out of spot. Now I gave it throttle there and there was a, de a delay. So I have no doubt that the Wi-Fi FPV is causing some delay issues. See, now I hit that bump and now the camera's aiming up. <laughs> this is getting to be a bit uh, ridiculous the amount of times I have to go adjust the camera. Thankfully, I don't foresee locking the camera into one spot as being a very difficult thing to do. So that's why we do these reviews, so you guys have an idea. How does this perform, and is there anything I need to do to this car when I get it, if you choose to buy it, um, that'll help it perform better. And obviously, the two things I'm seeing are related to the FPV. The camera's wobbling all over the place. Uh, it's it's mounted securely, so there's no problems with that. It's just a swivel mount. Is the ball joint in there is moving the camera around whenever you hit a hard bump. Uh, you would, if you it would run into something. And obviously the phone clip does not fit onto mine. Now maybe if they, you order it, uh, maybe they get a different version and they fixed it. Um, I don't know. Well, I just it does not even come close to staying on. On Tom Top's website, there's one picture that shows the phone on there, but I can't tell you if that's a different controller. It looks the same, but does it have a different antenna? You know, does it have a round one where it'll snap on there? Like so I've used that phone clip before on drones and they have a rounded antenna that it slides through and stays in place. And of course the camera is off to the side again. So like I said, the FPV needs some, uh, some tweaks to get it to really how you're gonna want it with the clip and the camera mount. And then there's a little bit of, that, of, that, of this delay in the controls. Um, it's annoying, I'm used to much more response but it's not affecting my ability to drive it. Um, it's not fast enough to where these slightly de delayed inputs are gonna cause any issue. On a you know, 40 or 50 mile per hour car, uh, that would be devastating. <laughs> um, but on this car, it's not an issue. And now I've just completely lost bind. Uh, this did this one other time earlier. I don't know what happened. I don't believe the car's dead. The battery's fully charged. It's just completely lost behind. So I don't know what to say. Um, it's going to be, you know, before this happened, I would say, I would probably say this car would be fine for a kid, um, you know, to drive around um, because the delayed controls aren't a huge issue. 
and if you can just lock this camera in place i do like this rechargeable um you know and maybe rig up some sort of phone clip on your controller um, those are re relatively easy things to do but the fact that twice now i did it before i started this uh, driver view when i was testing it it uh, just went down the driveway and poof, stopped. I thought, well, maybe it's just some bug. I wasn't going to mention it because you never know. You get one thing happen, and, and when you're doing something, it never repeats it. But look, like, it just did it again. Um, if I turn the power off, I turn the power off to the controller. Turn the power back onto the car, which is nice. You're not cutting the power to the camera, so you don't have to rebind it to that. Look, it rebound and it's fine. But we were pretty much done with the driver view anyway there. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording the uh, video footage and uh, you guys can at least see how that looked. Um, I can't tell you whether that bug here, with it losing bind, it, it looked like it lost bind, I think the controller was flashing, is just um, specific to my car being slightly defective or if it's an issue with all of them, I don't know. Um, that Wi-Fi FPV can cause strange issues. I mean, it could be that it simply uh, uh, messed the signal up so much that it confused it and it dropped its bind. I don't know. Um, it just it does make me worry. So, well, guys, if you are interested, there is a link to this in the description if you wanted to pick one up. But I would be a little bit leery of it because of the issues that I'm encountering. Uh, but if you don't mind, you know, modding it, locking the camera in place is going to be a piece of cake. Um, Getting a phone clip on here if you need it on the controller is not going to be too hard, but losing bind once in this review and once prior to it is going to be a bit annoying. So uh, take that into mind if you're okay with taking the risks and you know it's not a bad price vehicle. So like I said, purchase link in the description. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I really appreciate it. Make sure you press the bell so you know whenever uh, I post a new video you get notified. And as always guys, have a good day. The power of the dark side, side, side.